Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs of Dr. Contrast Live. I hope all of you as well. And uh, just that I take a moment here and uh, introduce um, today's uh, stream or presentation. I think it'll be a little bit interesting one because uh, let me go back in a little histrionics here. I um, um, had a call or a concern from a young person in a landscape design and architectural firm here in town about having difficulty doing some organic shapes, uh, round forms and elements of, uh, so that are more compound than out of the ordinary. And uh, so I thought, well, we'll just maybe start today's stream with a little bit of an explanation about how to get there. And I don't want to turn this into a teaching system or a platform, but I didn't want to address that question because many of us, self-included, uh, have a hard time sometimes developing these very organic shapes that become very convoluted um, and uh, sometimes difficult to put into context here. So before I begin to show you what I wanted to really pre present to you today, which is a really live project uh, done out of um, just a, a small town, not a small town, but a medium-sized uh, city uh, southwest of Denver, Colorado called Waterbelt. And uh, I selected that one to show you as a project base today because it had some very unique uh, elements in it and ended up with a real shocker as far as uh, some of the gateways and some of the uh, wayfinding systems that we uh, finally ended up with. But um, I'll get to that in a moment. But I thought I'd just take a moment and go through a real quick recap to help any individual out there. There might be difficulty with uh, organic shapes or various, uh, as I said, convoluted or extremely compound shapes. So it all begins by, by understanding what the principles are of um, putting the basic perspective together. I know that's a terrible word to deal with, but nonetheless, it's all part of the fabric. And once you work with that and begin to see how it works, you can actually cheat it and manipulate it to really become a real aspect and an asset for your program work. So um, let's, let's just start to do this first. Um, I already laid out a little quick sketch here, horizon line and a leading edge, for example. I want to block some things in to show you how this would be an example of doing a very rectangular or very... Um, um, uh, non-geometric, uh, pardon me, a geometric shape that's much more, much much sheer, uh, less organic. And this is called like a pillar of, or a column of some sort. So I put the drive lines in place and come back and just pick up some of those areas here. And just lay in the frames, get that started. And you pick a point of reference, bring that out here. And let's just kind of bring that system down here that's the same size. Let's take that right back, that point of reference right there, back to central vanishing point. That's going to give me this cube system right here. That's going to give me the face of a cube in perspective. And I think it's interesting to look at that from the point of view of why are we going into an element such as structural matters in perspective to get uh, sketch and illustration work. Because one complements the other. And the more you understand perspective and how all these geometric solids work, like the five basic solids, and how they function, the more fluid your work is going to become and less uh, hazardous or prone to mistakes and oh, errors and so forth that you don't want to contend with. So let's kind of put this together here. Let's go back and begin to build this cube. It's in two-point perspective. Let's take this same thing, get the cut line down. We've done this before. We actually bisect it and then trisect that element. Bring that line right through to find where the depth of this guy is back to the horizon line. Then we take that point of reference right back in again. Oops, let's get this out here. There we are. Let's take that point of reference right through. And there's the other side of the cube right there. And we kind of cross over. And again, cross over to get this done. So there's a floor system here. And a very tight upper. Let's draw that through and then connect that dot. So we've got this upper that does, look how compressed that is, how very minimal the upper portion is, how compressed that portion is, and how open the lower piece is. That's part of the drama of perspective and working with it. So when you put all that together, now we're going to go back and develop some circles in perspective here. This is really going to be the interesting part of it here. So first thing I'm going to do is come back, switch pens here. I'm going to find the perspective center of this cube, first this face of the cube, get it to that, and then again, there it is. And again, come back to its minor. Draw that right back to vanishing point. This now becomes my minor accent, or, or axis rather. This now becomes my major axis. At all times, that major axis has to be vertical. That's going to give the orientation to the circle or the organic shape you're going to work with. So let's go back in now, put the circle in place. I'm going to hit that contact point, that contact, that contact, and that contact by rotating in. And getting that circle to work. And there it is. That's phase one. I'll come back to this side. I'll do the same thing. Find the center. Come back to major. Get that to work. Back to minor, which is right there. And come back in and create that circle. That keeps everything honest. All of a sudden, how it compresses and opens things up a little bit. Now, down on the ground, for example, the same thing. Center line. Back again. Major axis and minor axis. And again, here's my circle. Contact. Contact, contact, and contact. And there it is. I'm going to switch gears here. There's a circle on the ground plane. 
well, really organic that becomes. And I think once you begin to understand those, those, those certain positions in space, especially when you start to develop columns or pillars of some sort, it really helps to understand what the geometry is doing. So once again, in review, anytime you're dealing with a very compound shape, pillars or organic walls of some sort in landscape work, always begin to build it from the point of view of what the solids or what the geometric volumes are doing. And in this case, uh, it's just circles in perspective, which is very complicated unto itself. So let's just go back in through here. Major axis again, minor axis. By the way, minor axis always go back to vanishing point right or left. And the major axis always stands vertical. It never tips around. It does, and there's a lot of lies out there that I'm not going to get into today. Uh, but I want to just start this premise to answer this question that this individual told me in this landscape form group, how he's having tough, difficulty doing organic shapes. And I'll show you the actual real world application here in just a moment. Let's go back to this and see. Let's just get that in. And now it's my contact point there. Touch that. Every one of those coordinates. And take that circle and round it right in there. There it is. That's, a, that's how the geometry starts. Now when you rotate that, let's do this. When I rotate that in a space and do this, same thing happens. There's the face of the cube, which is build those organic shapes off of. I'm back going to get that down. Now, find the perspective center. Let that come back. Now, here's my major axis. Go back and just kind of ink that in major, and then minor, right back to vanishing point. There it is. There's my major axis. And here's my minor axis. There it is. Now, the other thing that's missing here, sometimes back to the other VP, Minor goes back to vanishing point left. Now this axle, which is this axle, is going to go right back to vanishing point right. So, so on that premise, now we spin this around that axle by doing the following. Again, there, there, contact, contact, and then rotate in. And there you are. I mean, that keeps the geometry honest. And it also begins to develop what happens when you begin to build columns and the like. So let's come and another sheet of paper here. I hope this is clarified for you. Again, it all comes down to knowing what the face of that cube is doing, over that, that, that volume of a cube is doing, which is a three-dimensional solid, and you find its center, and you begin to spin that on a major minor axis, and you rotate that circle in place, and you're on your way. And I think the other thing about it, too, is no matter where you turn on that cube, it's always going to be honest. If, for example, all the vertical walls are going to have the major axis standing up, and on the top and the bottom, the minor axis is on the ground, but it goes right back to vanishing point right or vanishing point left. But it just follows right around. So it's it's this major, and that becomes major on the ground plane, and that becomes major in the upper. So it all works together. It just stays very harmonic. And in fact, you can kind of fill in the blanks by doing this. And then even on the inside of that cube, right in through here, you've got another circle inside that. So you can keep breaking this thing down, become extremely formidable and extremely correct and indisputable. So that's why I wanted to start with that, to help this young person get through the process of learning how to put together proper organic shapes. So let's kind of switch gears here from get rid of this guy and put it into real-time action. If I'm looking at a column of some sort, I'm going to come back in here and just do the fog. Go back and pick a center line. We'll come back and hit a base, we'll come up, up on top, and begin to develop this guy. Come up on top of that. If I put a crown on top of this, I'm going to carry that form right on through, and back up on top of that, and put a lid on this thing, or an upper. Turn that around. And again, if there's another element inside that, I'm still going to work with these circles, so to speak. There's an element here, and an element there. We'll come back and get that to work. Again, back into this, down to a base of some sort. That might have a little bit of flair to it, so I can open that up. And notice how that construction element has helped me build that column by using the whole concept. And let's put it in perspective here. Let's do this. There's a one. There's two. In one point. There's three. And there's four. Well, look what happens along the way. There's my perspective center. Let's see how accurate we are here. There's my perspective center. And let's rotate. Sure enough, we're good. We're good. Now, in this case, that major axis goes right back to that center line column right there. So that's one. Now, you rotate again. You go back and you get a little more compound with this. Let's say we want to add a wall here. Okay, let's come back and through. Let's pick a point of reference. Go back in perspective and add a wall. Now, let's come out here. More organic. Let's put that in shape. Let's do this. Now, wrap that around. Come back in again. Put some substance to it. End cap. Bring this into play. There's a wall being added to that form. Notice I'm still following the same fundamentals of perspective to get this thing to work. 
I'm going to come back out here. Let's find the center line of that wall, bring it out. Let's come back in perspective again and rotate this out. Put a little bit, I will look at a curtain on this thing, just like a, like a little softscape around it. And there it is there. Now let's can pick up this, this shoulder. Now notice I'm working everything off of that, that start, that really the most important part of this whole process is to get that circle to really work for me. Now I'm using that point of reference to graft that wall under that, that, that basic shape. That's, that's how it begins to function. Now when I come back in through here, I can add this, a little bit of detail to it, put a cornice on top of this thing, put some more structure in this thing, and begin to develop this form around that shape into some shadow here. Again, through it again. Again, this might be as simple as this. Now, with my light source, I can come back in here and notice, you're gonna cast a shadow on this form here. Let's get a little bit of this underneath here. Shadow underneath that little overhang. Come back in and drop a bit of a, a, a cast shadow of that column onto this wall. Drop that off. Add that secondary piece here. Continue that shadow. until it disappears. Some bad little bit of texture here. Back in perspective, drive lines, breaking that up. And a stone process here, just kind of filling in some of the blanks. Put a little bit of surface to it. No sign of following the shape or the surfaces themselves. Look at that forms coming off the page in terms of understanding the geometry you're dealing with here. So let's go back and finish this up just a bit. I hope this is helping. This is really a, a very formidable concept and hard system to work with, but once you understand it, I don't fully yet, but it's amazing to me how it all begins to function. So I'm going to go back out through here, a little bit of this. Now, let's just add this to it. Let's say we want to soften it off. No problem. This one there, one there. Let's put one back here. Drop it in. Put this in place. So we put a little bit of sidewalk definition to this thing. And come right back in through here with one, two, Work the circles first, get the volume in place, then we'll dedicate some, some reference to it. A little bit of texture in this is softscape. I'll take it off the hardscape here to work with it. Put a little surface on top of this thing too, just shows what the light source is doing with this tree, this foliage. Now again here. Another bit of texture on top of this guy. And a little bit of brick liner coming off of that wall. Take it through. Again, very simple little textural stuff. Let's get some of these plant things around it to work a little bit and I'll stop very quickly. I just want to show you how this whole thing began to build as a result of getting that one form to come off of the place here and really begin to look into the, the whole process of putting all you. This might be more of a, like I can say, maybe a smaller series of plantings of some sort. Just kind of walk that into it. And then over here, same with this. It's going to put a little bit of a, some foliage in through here. Maybe it's like an ivy of some sort. Just a nice simple series of scribbles to get things done. Soften this thing off a little bit and get it started. Come back with the same kind of treatment here and then so forth. Let's kind of get this started here. Put a little bit of texture to it, soften it off a bit. Again, a little bit of light source in each one. Just enough tint here to kind of give you some essence of where that light source is coming from, which is in this case from the left hand side. Same thing over here. And again, a bit of a walkway change here. Back to some sort of a hardscape. 
a little decorative piece let it flate at that again just finish off the insert here a little bit of maybe an ivy ground cover of some sort just to kind of indicate there's a texture change inside that little uh, that area that we're dealing with here and again let's go back to this let's get this piece roll that off just a bit and if this has a bit of a texture to it maybe it's a, it's a limestone of some sort a little bit of that just a lot of variation in theme here in terms of texture changes but at the same time having an awful lot of just character to put that piece together there's a thumbnail a little thumbnail sketch let's go back into it just add a some of more one of that let's go back in perspective here Real quick, a little bit of atmosphere, a little bit of dimension. So that's a quick little exercise on where we are. For example, we started with this whole conversation with how do we set this material up for success in terms of putting together organic shapes, especially with a landscape and very organic surfaces to, to deal with. And what we're working with, it's incredible how the geometry begins to dictate, you know, the final conclusion or the, the decision-making process. And it, um, it, it's very conclusive. It, it can't be cheated. It can't be lied upon, but it can be. Once you understand it, you can work with it a little more clearly. And I think that's why I want to start with this conversation this today, this, this stream with getting that, that why. The individual is really concerned about, I can't seem to get those those, those round shapes right, or those, those cylindrical shapes or organic forms put together. So I think I'd just start the stream today. I didn't want this to be a, kind of a teaching process, but this is where it all begins in terms of getting the, getting the geometry down and understand how circles and perspective work. And in fact, you know what? I might just maybe in the next couple of weeks or so go back and refresh myself with a good circles and the perspective review and take it from there. And um, so again, here's the theory and here's the application very quick and dirty we started with this little column here added a wall to it came out of it and put it in a wall perspective every one of these elements are governed by this process here it's all in perspective all the drive lines are coming off of a various for example the rise of line being up in here again these are going back to bp left this is going back to bp right so it all begins to function together so let me stop right there and we'll get rid of this and we'll show you what this project was um out on the on the western part of the country uh, in Waterville, uh, Colorado, very interesting uh, set of circumstances. They came to me, city administration, wanted to do a whole new uh, um, facelift on getting into gateways and wayfinding systems into their city. So I'm going to walk you through some sketches now on uh, what um, part of the process, just some of the sketches that were submitted to the committee out there in, uh, in Waterville, Colorado, for approval and review, etc. And uh, very interesting how it all uh, just started. So typical approach, getting the signage down. They wanted a lighting system of some sort and some of the, um, the gateways uh, in the different sections of the city. Uh, we addressed that, for example. These are very quick ballpoint pen sketches. And in some cases, um, um, fine line penner, this uh, um, Windsor Newton fine line pen, great thing to work with. So these are real rapid sketches. And I, I'm, I have a bad habit, so to speak, <clears throat> when I work with this stuff. They just do a lot of scatter gunning around the page. You put a lot of composition in place. So you know, one thought leads to another, etc. And um, you begin to put together, for example, here's an elevation and what it might look like in the plan view, another variation of the theme. And one of the things that we're talking about, too, and I recall, was that uh, they, they wanted a very formal looking, almost uh, uh, um, a British or UK approach to the uh, column systems and lighting and lanterns and the like. But at the same time, they want to incorporate some of the rugged landscape of that uh, Waterville area, which is in, located in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, that had a little bit of stone wall and so forth. So, so you'll see some sketches that have some of this very, uh, what I would call raw edge stone uh, grafted onto a very typical column. And um, you'll see it here. And then um, again, um, this gateway had some signage to it. So again, variation of theme there. Some of the cornice um, uh, hat section roof studies to work with on it uh, that became part of the process and again back to a plan view again so you'll see a lot of variation uh, from sketch to sketch as i go through it um not, not, I'm not i don't really fall in love with anyone i did and i find the theme and once you go through a series of um, back and forth with submitting sketches and review and so forth and getting some feedback from the committees then you begin to tune in tune in and you'll see some things during the end of this presentation that became very apparent and uh, became buildable and approved so there's the first set of sketches 
Um, just I'm, I'm, I go through a whole burst of sketches like this initially, and there's another variation, just kind of slowing down a little bit, getting a little cleaner with with uh, some of the uh, very formal column. And again, the little again that uh, what I call living edge wall or hand hand hewn wall, uh, along with some softscape to kind of knock it off a little bit and uh, soften it a bit. Same thing with this um, a lighting system. This is more of a transparent globe of some sort with a road graphics uh, W. Um, in a designation of Waterville, uh, Colorado. Um, business district and signage here, for example, maybe a wayfinding piece and directions that has to get out of the, how to get to those pieces. So that's another variation of theme here. And I'll just move along quickly here. Pardon me, get my hands all straight up. We'll be good. There's two. And again, same same basic variant, just expanding. Notice how all of a sudden you start to see something here and then begin to expand on the theme about where we are here. Maybe it's that kind of a column look, which is variation theme here, with more of a traditional stone uh, uh, and brick combination. Maybe a little gateway bridge of some sort that kind of walks into it. Um, almost playing off of this look here, for example, again with brick. So um, this is the third page we put together. I mean, I, let me clarify for a moment. When I say third page, this would be the third page in the project today or this the presentation today but hundreds of sketches go together i'm just selecting things out but what i think might be applicable for you to look at to tell you the story about how this stuff all comes together and while i'm at it i just do i, I always say this and i really can't uh, help but i uh, always repeat myself it's um, it's 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 woven into my fabric of presentation this discipline i love um, landscape architecture and architecture are really one of my uh, secret passions. Um, why? Because it's so unique. There's so many things to deal with, of texture changes, materials, uh, different personalities, different approaches to certain situations, soft and hardscape materials, lighting. It's incredibly powerful, and I think I really enjoy it because it's a great learning curve to work with. And I'm almost learning something new about um, the, the discipline, which is great because when I go back to product design or architecture, or pardon me, transportation design, and some of the space stuff we do and all the other materials we're involved in, uh, teaching systems and empathic studies and the like, you bring, I bring this subject matter into that play and it opens up a whole new vista of things to work with and to, and to work with. So it's really, it's neat stuff. So this again, another variation on the theme, uh, real quick uh, ballpoint sketches. And while I'm at it, uh, um, don't misunderstand, but each one of these sketches you see are run about maybe um, per, play, uh, per page, about maybe uh, eight to 10 minutes. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time. I just put the system down and go through a theme, start another one, go through a theme, start another one. And, uh, and that's what really is taking place here with this um, uh, presentation. Now, a little bit closer to some of the detail work. I Maybe mean, it's a nice big prominent walkway through. Uh, a lighting, a very, very big, large lantern. We got a little cupola on top of the roof here. A little bit of a detail here of what you can't see here is this happening. It's a very large lantern. Uh, there could be a gateway piece coming in the city of Waterville. Uh, very well received. And I got some lamp posting and some banner graphics to go along with it. So, again, look at the variation in theme there because of that really cool stuff you're dealing with. And notice the land contour, just enough line work here to tell you that's in a slope and, run, and, and it comes back down to normal surface. Again, with a little bit of fencing added, um, that, um, maybe as a detail. Um, just fun stuff and um, uh, very well received. The sketches were very well received uh, from, from beginning to end. And I, I'm prone to, and I think this is something I really want to make sure we stress here. When I'm, when I'm hired to do something, this has happened about two or three years ago. When I'm hired to become the project manager and work with their design team, I mean, I just go into it for heart and soul. Um, I look at it from the point of view that they've been, they've been gracious enough to ask me to be a part of their team. And I'm going to respond in kind to be extremely, um, for lack of a better term, uh, very prolific in terms of putting ideas out there for them so they can see what the variations are and what their community really truly can, be, can, can become as a result of good design being hopefully projected um, from a meeting to meeting. So there's another variation here in the theme. I'm kind of switch gears. I know it's back to plan view a little bit. I'll move around plan view and then back to perspective. Maybe an elevation here and there. A little bit of a courtyard here, like a seating area of some sort. Um, a little benching system around it. A soft scape around this very, very strong pillar piece, which is this is a gateway piece that was on the north end of town. They want another appearance at the south end of town. So um, this is just neat things to work with here. Plan view, and again, a little perspective discussion. And the reason I go through this, um, this change of pace is very, um, very often uh, the case. Um, it's done for this reason. There, we're dealing with people, and I'm going to say this very carefully, not to be insulting, but to just be informative. We're dealing with individuals in the 
the world of, of land development and, and uh, commission pieces and, and uh, governor and gubernatorial things, decisions to be made from a, from a political point of view within these communities that are not familiar with the design cycle or how design really works or why the sketches function the way they do. So that's why I'm very careful. If I put together a plan view of some sort, then to the audience, this is the plan view. Looking down on it, this is what it might look like in perspective. So, ah, I see. Um, oftentimes we do things like that and, and confuse it. What are we looking at here? Um, so a really good, clear communication at all times is absolutely paramount. So most of my sketches will go through that process. Plan view, elevation, perspective, perspective, plan view, elevation, just moving it around quite a bit, keeping it lucid, keeping it fluid, but at the same time, highly communicative. So they see what's going on uh, from their input. And most, as I say too, most of the things you see here sketch-wise come from input from them. Well, we'd like to have, well, we'd like this, we don't like that. This is a preference, that is not. And I begin to listen to that stuff and, and transfer that onto paper. And it just makes for really good communication systems and a lot of great dialogue that comes out of it. So here's another little sketch here, uh, switching gears in the ballpoint pen, little plan view study again. A little elevation study, a little detail of the wall with a hat section wall coming off of that uh, that column to work with here. So a little, little fast little ballpoint pen study, switching gears just a touch. Another little variation of the theme here. Uh, same thing. Now notice how the plan view changes. It, it just is really really a lot of fun to see how it changes. For example, a little, little light, like a little lantern, a lamp post detail. These pieces here would be actually configurable. This is happening here and here on the end of those two wings, coming out for this uh, this this tower approach. Now, again, and this would be another way. This is a gateway piece here that might be illuminated or has signage to it. Uh, I didn't assign signage to this sketch, uh, but uh, to come you'll see what's beginning to take place here. Another variation on theme. Again, back to that same notice, I pick up on that same little form here, that little almost prop look to it um, at 90 degrees off the circle, and then moved into this little variation in themes here, and a little more decorative with it. It's kind of an interesting thing to look at, what it might look like in perspective again, making sure that the conversation we have with these individuals makes very good sense in terms of, here's the plan view, here's a perspective, here's a, a plan view, and again, another perspective with a different variation on the roof. In this case, this is more of a rectangular piece. This is more of a cylindrical piece. Um, and again, variation on theme with walls coming up. Maybe it's maybe it's this is a centerpiece, and the wall comes off symmetrical right and left to work with it. So um, again, uh, just diversity, 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 and being very fluid and very quick and, and extremely expressive with the sketches to get this work done. A little variation on theme here. Um, put a little Ferrari in there just to make sure that they understand that uh, this is not a second-rate citizenry at all. Um, they drive Ferraris in beautiful Waterville. Colorado. So put a little Ferrari in there to give them a little bit of taste of what it might look like uh, with the right kind of setting behind it. Again, double tiered canopy on top. And this would be more of a rectangular piece here showing you here with a little bit of that, a variation of the detail here um, on the wall system, kind of isolating this part up. This is one theme and then maybe adding a little bit more intrigue with some lighting, some fencing, and a little bit more drama in the actual cupola on top of the actual column itself. So there we are, and this is really this is really interesting. So at this stage of the game, um, all this is happening in the north end of their their village or their their uh, city, and uh, they're very prone to they're very proud of the fact that the uh, the state signature of the Colorado state of Colorado is a buffalo. So I said, what if we did a landmark piece or a gateway piece that, that highlighted a, like a buffalo sculpture of some sort? So oh, okay, that's going to be great. So I'm going to have to teach myself how to draw a buffalo. So. <laughs> This was a lot of fun because I just went immediately switched gears and went right into okay, what if we what do we do with this piece? Again, no, notice natural terrain. This can be almost like a limestone piece or a sandstone piece that's already sculpted and grafted on a piece of uh, graphics uh, with a compass uh, variation in it and a big, huge sculpture of a buffalo up on top of that thing uh, as a landmark piece. It'd just be a great gateway. I mean, I think that was a neat, um, one of the administrators brought up the fact that it'd be nice to see that maybe included in some of the sketches that we put together for this this whole program, for this, uh, this um, actually it's an urban planning or a city planning group that was putting all this together. So I thought that was kind of a neat variation of the theme. So I started here. Then you'll see the variation to go to this one, which is getting more of a wayfinding piece. I'm being a little more abbreviated with the buffalo piece itself and actually getting, again, still keeping that same basic rough stone and grafting that as a part of the sculpture, stone sculpture, and then with a wayfinding piece on it. You can use either a wayfinding piece or also even as a gateway. Uh, the scale here could be very, very enormous, could be very, very captive, maybe five to six feet, in some cases maybe 10 to 15 feet, depending on where they wanted to go with it. 
Another variation on the theme here. Um, again, sculpture off the top and a different variation of lighting for the Westerfield graphic. And then some wayfinding pieces below. And just enough theme here to kind of give them a taste of what it might look like if you use that bison or that buffalo as a theme base uh, for the uh, both the wayfinding and the gateway structure itself. So there we are here. We go back into this guy, another variation on the theme. Again, this whole concept of, of uh, that really rough hewn. Uh, rough stone look with certain historic markers um, applied to the actual sculpture itself with little little points of interest along the way that could become this more of a wayfinding piece as with this way as well back to a full sculpture on the buffalo piece itself and a very traditional stone base on it that uh, kind of a different uh, uh, approach to it it's supposed to be so rugged looking but still giving again notice from start to finish every one of these buffalo studies variations on theme being small adding wayfinding not to, not to being traditional brick being um, raw, raw edge stone i mean it all began to help put together an image for this uh, community to begin the thing to pick up and to pick on the, the work with so then the last one at least the last one was a much more uh, elaborate piece where you really get into a really strong uh, theme here in terms of having a very very different kind of approach here with a uh, uh, hand handcrafted stone uh, part of the sculpture then the application of wayfinding on top of this and the lighting system on top of it as well so uh, a lot of this would be this piece in plan b would have this very dark granite piece in the middle and this this, this facade would be a facade piece a flat graphic that is just sculpted to be adhered both right and left hand side of this piece and then this uh, lamping unit is grafted off of that center um, the black ebony piece it uh, holds the two pieces together so um really interesting a lot of great reception from this too i think they built one of these guys uh, which one i'm not sure of they never bothered to call me back and that's okay as long as they were happy with the job that's fine and uh, they were so uh, that ends the, uh, the series on you know, the bison bit then we went back to more traditional um looking at wayfinding pieces here uh, again, rough stone, rough stone, and just you know, different variations, just great variations on putting those things together for the clientele to evaluate and look at and say, this is this the right direction? We want more traditional, we want to go more uh, straightforward, but we want the combination of that rough wall or that hand hewn wall and some basic signage along with it. So that was that. And then we went into, into a little line study here with uh, maybe a little park setting where you've got a, a gateway piece that gives you an indication of where you are. And uh, what happens here is that this guy, uh, a little line drawing first, and then let me show you side by side, line drawing into the color variation of what that might look like when you put all the pieces together. Uh, both the soft, softscape material the landscaping around it and then the hardscape itself and then some some light uh, lamp posts with banner graphics on it to kind of give you an indication that you are here in this area this is your gateway into a certain subdivision or an area within the city so that was that guy put together and let's go back here it's those two together and then again again it was interesting too once they had seen let's go back to this once they had seen this plate generated they thought well what would we, how would what would we do with this we have a location on the main artery coming into town that we'd like to utilize to place this thing so this represents here this next sketch from their drawings that they sent were um was a plan view study of the entryway and then entry egress in the village or the city itself so what i began to do was take that whole uh, that whole highway which is here obviously entry egress they had a they had an old landmark sitting in this location here along with a walkway to go through it and some benches and so forth to kind of uh, rest and sit and a lot of sculpting in the boulevard as they come into the city and i said you know why don't we take a look at this location here and give it that look with um the uh, again it's, it's almost a variation let me go back to this for a moment it's almost the same variation as this guy in that place but a little bit more variation of the theme maybe it's more formal with some lighting so like for example lamp posts at each end Maybe it's a lot more rectangular, uh, which is, is displayed here. It's more of a square or cube um, format. And it has a very interesting cupola on top. And again, we can put lighting outside and also add lighting on the inside if you wanted to do that as a gateway coming into the village. So that was really well received there. And um, again, so so unique in terms of, again, a black and white line study, which gives you a footprint to work with. At least in this case, it gave me a footprint to work with. That they really liked this location, which I thought was nice because it's very organic looking. It kind of followed the rhythm of the road going into the uh, actual city itself and became a very uh, unique uh, a signpost in terms of how to build this guy. So uh, that was it. So we went to that. And then all of a sudden, the last but not least, the color study. Let's do this, put it side by side. There is the actual finished product in terms of putting together what that might look like uh, for them to see once you pass through this area 
uh, coming into the city itself. Um, and uh, and really, uh, it, it's from start to finish for me, it was a really tremendous, and they all are. Everyone I work with, uh, everything, landscape and architecture, no matter what the subject matter is, doing spaceships or star citizen, uh, transportation design studies um, for a variety of clients or whatever, um, and also, uh, uh, interior space design, architectural work in the landscape architecture. Um, it never ceases to amaze me how much, um, how ignorant I really am about what's going on out there as far as learning the learning curve. And every time I go through a cycle such as this, or the things I've been working on recently, for example, uh, that last dream we put together, um, for example, was really unique in terms of, uh, from a learning curve point of view, because it, it dealt with, with um, just, um, very loose sketches for product design work and then again the, the one we did on tuesday uh was extremely unique because it was much more tuned into a different discipline altogether and uh, extremely uh, productive in terms of what you learn from this stuff and i think what the other great aspect of it is this that, that the, what's probably the most unique part of the whole process for me from the design point of, or a designer is to get to work and to get to meet people who really understand the, their in this case what the community really represents what, what the pulse is and what the likes and dislikes are. And I think that's a great advantage to have because when you go through that process um, and, and going blind is extremely difficult, but if you have individuals in that committee or the mayor's group or the, uh, the building committee group or the, the park and recreation individuals, they know what the system and what the public looks like and what they want to favor, which is helpful. And that doesn't mean they dictate the design, but it gives us, an, as a designer, some input about where to go, where not to go. And uh, I think that's extremely a, a great asset to, to work with. <coughs> Pardon me, it's an asset because you're not out there floundering, hoping and trying to fill, put your finger in the neck and, and stop the leaking. You know exactly where you want to go with this thing based on the input coming from the community itself. So everything I do, um, I'm not ashamed to say this, uh, everything I do, uh, I learn something from because I have no clue about, um, I, I have a lot to learn yet. I'm still thinking, still learning an awful lot. But every time I get an assignment to do certain things, it always opens up the doors of opportunity. And from the learning point of view, and then I'm doing some gratifying work, hopefully, for people who are kind enough to have you come on board to be part of their design team. So I think uh, enough said, I think that's just one of the most uh, intriguing parts of the whole process here. In addition, pardon me, in addition to just going through the process of, of going through the thinking process and evaluating concept and design, uh, the most important residual part of it all is, is what, what, what is left, the remnant of what is left behind. What do they pick up on? What do they see in your work that makes it significant? And what do you see in them that makes you a better person? So I think that's the thing that's unique to me about the design process here. So um, unless there's any questions that come up, uh, hey, Victoria, how are you? It's good to have you on board, man. Um, uh, just I don't know if you, did you did you catch a murder enjoy the stream or you just come on board um, uh, if you want to go back to a real quick recap here if you'd like um, just now hey very good well basically the whole concept here Victoria was uh, going back to getting into some landscape architecture and I started the whole process I had a question come in from a young person um, in landscape architecture design about how to, how to go in the office unexpectedly oh no problem are you still there uh, I'll just give you a real quick history over what we went through um, very, very quickly here. This, this is the last series of sketches we did with uh, this landscape study here. So good to have you on board. Yeah, you're home now. Very cool. Um, let me go back to real quickly here. I'll rush you through some things. Uh, it started here uh, very, very quickly, Victoria. And no problem. The, 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 an individual came to me the past week after I finished on Tuesday's program, had a hard time doing organic shapes, um, how to work with uh, columns and so forth, the landscape design, and some, of the very, uh, some of these undulating shapes that they were dealing with. So I started the stream today with going back to some basic fundamental thinking about um, the more you, the more organic it gets, understand what the principles of perspective are doing for you in, de in developing circles. No question whatsoever. That's where the power is. Basic cube, breaking it all down, finding your perspective center, major axis, minor axis, then develop that circle around that, and then begin to work with that and put it into perspective. So I went through that little learning exercise for this individual, hopefully, and then, then from that, convert that into this. Here's where I started with a little thumbnail sketch here, and then added off of that column, this wall, and some of the surrounding pieces around it to give them some idea of how the structure is dictated by the government of a perspective, circles, and so forth, how to build those forms accurately. So uh, I started the premise on that little note, and uh, went from there into a project I dealt with out in uh, a, a village called Waterville, 
Carolot, Colorado, which is southwest of uh, Denver. And I went through a whole series of sketches here, just thumbnail, and I'll go very quickly here. These are, um, these are both uh, gateways and wayfinding studies, and just a variety of, uh, I mean, this is a real small portion of the portfolio sent out there. But again, variations on theme, wall graphics, lighting, one, and then do into two, and then into a third plate, just variations on theme. And then into four, putting into context some sort of promenade or a wall spur, pardon me, a, a green space or a, a resting place within the village itself with a real strong cupola and lighting. So and then into another study, a generation and theme. And I made a point throughout the whole process, uh, Victoria, about um, how important it is. You're dealing with an audience that's not really tuned in the design process, so you have to be very careful about how you put together these sketches. And I always like in terms of if plan view is here, this is what it looks like in an elevator perspective, and I'll work back and forth, plan view, elevation perspective, to make sure that what's, what's, what's being clarified is being clarified. Notice even here, let's go to this out for a moment here. Again, plan uh, elevation, plan view, and perspective, and what it's all beginning to look like. Uh, it all, all works together very harmoniously, so I can move along here. Uh, there's another little study here. Some variations on theme, plan view and an elevation, a little bit of a detail on that wall. I'm going very quickly not to waste your time. Variations on theme here, maybe changing into a prop system where you've got this wall, this very uh, simple organic piece on front here, very round, into a lamping detail and then into the plan view here, what that might look like. And taking off on that, a little variation on theme. Um, again, notice plan view, perspective, plan view, elevation, and an elevation. So changing the theme all the time, but making sure that the aspect is being truthfully here. And then again, a little, a little location of it, um, for example, in a curve here, um, a, a wayfinding piece here, a very strong entryway piece into the village, and then a location, and then again, an isolated elevation here, what that might look like. Then it was really interesting, from that, one of the individuals in that, in that uh, and the organization said, you know, one of our strong themes here in the West is uh, we have a very strong penchant for Buffalo. That's our that's our state symbol. So, oh, great. You want to put that into some, yeah, let's look at some, uh, maybe some markers, what that might look like. So the next series of sketches were really interesting. I learned how to draw a Buffalo stuck in a car. Oh, yeah, I had to sink that in. It just, you know, it gives it a sense of scale, doesn't it? And by the way, I, I told everybody in Denver and, the, and Waterville, that everybody should own a Ferrari because every great person should just have one. So they just kind of laughed at it. So that's kind of neat. But it kind of gives it a piece, that, a little bit of context. That Victoria, right? it's, a, it's a bad habit, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, back to, but I thought, oh, this is interesting. So they want to use this buffalo as a signature piece for wayfinding or maybe, uh, for example, a, uh, um, a wayfinding or a, uh, a gateway piece. So again, a lot, a lot of rough edge. Uh, this would be sands, a limestone or a sandstone piece with a very nice big sculpture on top of that as a, as a wayfinding piece or a, a definite gateway into the village itself. So the next few sketches, you'll see how that became part of the theme process. So I started there, then went to this with the live edge piece, the sculptural piece with a little bit of signage in between there. And again, another very strong theme, a little more traditional with an illuminated piece up on top of, of glass and a sculpture coming off of that. Again, another variation here on this guy was much more traditional. So with a live edge, but a little bit of a historical marker about certain points in, in the city that were key pieces. And again, back to a traditional base sculpture, and again, a lamppost with uh, some banner graphics that could be interchanged very easily. And the last one, at least, and the last one here was about, almost like a three-piece application where this front facade was attached to this very black ebony-type uh, structure in the center. And then it's, it's almost like a sandwich piece where this became lighted illuminated rather, and then signages, and also the, the sculpture piece, and a little bit directional uh, piece on top. And from there, went back in the more traditional uh, setups again, where again, the live edge wall, uh, lighting was a very key thing that they were after. Live edge requires such an understanding of composition in each of those work. Just thank you very much, uh, Victoria. Yeah, that's, that was a lot of fun. There's a real test, especially this guy right here. That was fun, just uh, put that together, this guy, Getting that whole function to work a little bit was really interesting. This piece, and not so much that, but again, yeah, this piece here as well. You know, it's getting that whole edge to kind of really be chiseled properly, make it look like natural terrain it was a real uh, real task. So they, they really enjoyed it. Um, it was a nice little variation of theme, and I think they used that as one of the areas. I think in the south end of the city, they used that as a piece of, as, as um, that bison piece as a, as a gateway entry into the, the village itself. And again, back here to traditional, the traditional pieces here. Um, 
They want to go, I'm very, very strong with lighting, very, very strong with, and again, with hat section uh, material up on top, metals uh, for wearability, brick, and again, variations with theme here. Same same basic setup with the, with the, a, a clear piece of glass that's illuminated uh, with the W graphic on it. And then there's another one. Then I'm going to put a little more context here. Something like this would be a gateway piece in a certain portion of the city where it's much more of a column base with a lighting piece on top and sitting in a park set. This is the actual, this was the actual black and white study that I converted that into a color study. And uh, so they could see what it might look like in terms of application, where the hardscape was, where the landscaping is, and where the softscape pieces are, and the banner graphics. So I always like to look at that point of view. If you tell the story correctly, for example, here it is in plan, here it is in perspective, black and white, here it is in color. So you're telling each frame along the way, you're leading them into a, uh, into a decision-making process. And you know that very well, too, Victoria, because you're part of the whole process as well. You know that. So that was that set, and then the other one I did uh, was this a little. Once they once they saw this, let me go back to this for a moment here. Once they saw this piece, the um, conversation was brought up that uh, we have a spot in town that uh, entry coming into this this uh, that we'll send you some prints, and I want to show you where we have a present gateway piece, but we're not happy. We'd like to lose something like this in that location. So all that to say, when that came in, this is the main artery going into town and entry egress, and then they had a location here. Um, uh, that was utilized a walking path some benches and the like and they wanted to take that same spot and put something unique into it So I put together this little, comp, little study sketch here notice a little bit of that same uh, cat's eye in here to work with um, Using that new technology or the new uh, Gateway piece in the same location just changing faces with it So I started with that one and then there's a the black and white study then when it's all said and done here is the final composition so again the story being told what it might look like in black and white, and what it might look like in transfer to color. So that can bring you up to speed, uh, Victoria, but what we went through the entire day here, I just thought it was kind of a lot of fun. Um, as I said here earlier on, I'm really, I'm enamored with, uh, I really love architecture and landscape architecture work. It's so unique in terms of materials technology, fabrication, uh, hardscape, softscape, the technology, lighting, and it's infinite. It's just great fun to work with. So I thought today's stream would be a lot of fun to follow up with what we did on Tuesday with something that's a little more, uh, we did a lot of architectural work in terms of a project base for a school system I worked on. But this was a little bit of a variation on theme where it's the same basic family, but a little bit more, a little bit more tuned in to some of the things you could spend months in your portfolio and not see. <laughs> that's, you know, I'm laughing because that's an absolute fact. I think I've, been, I've destroyed more trees in my lifetime, Victor, you can shake a stick at. But this is this is the first, I mean, I just go uh, from time to time to time. It's just absolutely amazing how much work there's been done here. But I really enjoy it. And I, I enjoy having you on board, Victor. You make it all possible. And uh, that kind of wraps it up for where I was today. And I'm going to close with this thought. Um, I don't think it's ever been in my vocabulary, and I'm sure same with you, Victor, that uh, we just treat this stuff lightly. Um, I'm going to close with this, uh, and I really feel this to say this with, with every ounce of soul within me. If people come to me, are generous enough to ask me to become part of the design team, I am going to be on my way to be extremely prolific and very tuned in to what they want to request. I just flood them with a lot of sketches, a lot of ideas. Not because you want know, numbers are important, but I respect the fact that they respect having me on their team. And I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. And every time I go through a process, whether it's architecture, charter design, product design, uh, you name it, none with the disciplines, I just flood it with a lot of sketches. I've been very fortunate to work with some great people. And I really want to keep that intact as I go through the process. Sir. So the reason I go through this stuff and, and sketch after sketch after sketch is not the numbers that are important to me. It's the learning cycle and working with other people and really give it just amazing direction. I mean, you're right. Uh, that's a sure. And it can in turn great direction. And that's what makes it work, Victoria. Victoria. No one's an island in themselves. I can't guess my way through this process. This whole project in, in Waterville, Colorado, was a product of a great interface back and forth between all the committee members. It was just a, yeah, um, it's nonverbal. Absolutely, it's nonverbal. Sometimes just a picture says it all. You're absolutely correct, uh, Victoria. So, so far, so good. It's been really interesting to see how that come together. But again, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm still active, still doing a lot of, having a lot of fun with my Twitch, and also here in town doing some neat stuff. And uh, I just really, um, I want to carry on by doing, being a good service to people who've been kind enough to have they come on board. So with all that to say, I just hope you have a moment. And if you, have, if you do have a moment, to drop me a note at jim at drcontrast.com. If you have anything you want me to work on and would like to discuss, 
uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays when I put my uh, my streaming programs on. I'd be happy to help you there if I can. Secondly, please take a moment to go to drcontrast.com. There's a lot of neat stuff going on on the website. I've got a lesson plan going there, nine drawings, um, nine drawing lesson plan. We're now really close to getting some good apparel and some new print work up on the site, so stay tuned. I know we keep making that announcement, but it's getting there. We want to make sure we do this right. And uh, with Shadow's help and everybody else involved in the process, it's going to be really cool to see it all come together. And last but not least, uh, I really encourage everybody that I work with, uh, for example, to, to never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. And Ventura, Victoria, thanks so much for joining me today. I uh, hope you're well. Thank you so much for, for joining in here. And I hope you have a great weekend. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next Tuesday. And again, never forget to remember to dare to be great. All the very best. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, well, oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get there on Saturday, Victor. Uh, I might have a conflict with my son doing some work with him in his house, but I just told Shadow that uh, if I can make it, I will definitely be there. And uh, if I'm not, please, I'll be there in spirit. So take care, man. Good to see you, Victor. Thanks again. All the very best. Thank you. <clears throat>